Hello, welcome to Microsoft Azure training series powered by ATCSL. My name is Neeraj. I am an enterprise architect, Microsoft certified Azure administrator associate, and I will be your instructor for this course. Welcome. This is the part four of the Azure virtual network series, creating site to site VPN. And in this session, we are going to learn about what a site to site VPN is and its applicability. And like the previous session, which was part three of the Azure Virtual Network series, point to site VPN. Here also, we will be creating the virtual network. We will uh, create the subnets and the gateway subnets, uh, the virtual machines and the virtual network gateways. But a little extra that we are going to do here is to configure the local network gateway, which will define our on-premises network and create the connections, which will bind both the virtual network gateways for Azure and the local network gateways that defines the local network or the on-premises network that we have. So this is what our demo will be. But even before we get into the demo, let's un understand uh, what exactly is a site-to-site -site VPN. Let us first try to understand what a site-to-site -site VPN is. A site-to-site -site VPN gateway, abbreviated as S2S, and it provides a way to connect your on-premises network to the Azure Virtual Network. And this type of connection requires a VPN device located on-premises that has an externally facing IP address. And this is how it is different from point to site where the VPN device is not required uh, and no public IP address as such is required with the VPN devices. So what happens is this Point to site depends on the VPN client software that is downloaded from the Azure, whereas this requires a VPN device with an externally facing IP address, is what I mean. Now, the site to site uses the IPsec or IKE, so IKE version 1 or IKE version 2 VPN tunnel. What is IPsec? IPsec, also known as the Internet Protocol Security or the IP Security Protocol, it defines the architecture for the security services for IP network traffic. They define the framework for providing the security at the IP layer, whereas the IKE v2 or v1 is a VPN protocol which stands for the Internet Key Exchange, and it was developed by Microsoft with the partnership with Cisco. One very important point to keep in mind when you are creating a site-to-site -site VPN is that your on-premises network IP address space should not overlap the address space of the Azure virtual network. Otherwise, those connections will not work and there will be a continuous failure and it will try to connect to the uh, network, but uh, this will not be a success. During the configuration of this site-to-site -site VPN, uh, when we are on the step where we are configuring the virtual network gateway, we are required to choose a gateway SKU. And these gateway SKUs, they define the boundaries and the limits for site to site. They define the maximum number of tunnels that it can have or the aggregate throughput benchmark it can have. So what is this uh, aggregate throughput benchmark? The aggregate throughput benchmark for a VPN gateway is a combination of the total throughput combined together for site to site and the point to site. So if you have a lot of point to site connections and a lot of S2S connections, so the aggregate of those both point to site and site to site will define the aggregate throughput benchmark. So if we talk about the basic SKU, a maximum of 10 S2S connections or tunnels can be made. So it includes the IKE or the IPsec and it can have a maximum of 100 Mbps aggregate throughput benchmark. Whereas for VPN GW1, GW2, and GW3, the maximum number of S2S connections that we can have is 30. But for VPN GW1, we can have the aggregate throughput benchmark as 650 Mbps. For VPN GW2, the aggregate throughput benchmark is 1 Gbps. But for VPN GW3, we have a total aggregate throughput benchmark of 1.25 Gbps. So depending upon your organizational requirements, depending upon the, your corporate requirements, you will choose the different SKUs that are present for defining the virtual network gateway for the site-to-site -site connectivity. 
it is time for us to get started with our demo. But even before we get started, let us understand the steps that we are going to complete for the configuration of site-to-site -site VPN. We already have a resource group configured for us. So we will start as a first step with the configuration of a virtual network. We will define the virtual network and in our case, the name is etcsl underscore bnet. During the configuration of the virtual network, a default subnet gets created and we need to give it a name. So here we have given it a name of WFFE and the IP address range has been defined as 10.101.1.0. Once that is done and once the virtual network has been created, we'll go back to the subnets and there we will be creating a gateway subnet with the address range of 10.101.0.0. And this gateway subnet is a must for the creation of VPN gateway. Once the complete virtual network along with the gateway subnet is complete, as a next step, we will be configuring the virtual network gateway. When we are configuring the virtual network gateway, there are two things that we need to provide. One, we need to give a passphrase. And the second, we need to give a name to the public IP address that will be assigned to the virtual network gateway. Here, we have assigned the name as VNG underscore IP1. So this IP address and the passphrase that we uh, create, this will be used by your on-premises VPN gateway. The next step is to create the local network gateway. The local network gateway defines the on-premises network. Here, we will give the on-premises IP address of the VPN gateway and the IP address range of the resources that will be accessing the Azure virtual network resources. After we have completed the configuration of local network gateway, the next step is to create connections. And what does it do? It creates a binding between the virtual network gateway and the local network gateway. For our demo purposes, we are good until this step. But when you are working in the real world production scenarios, you also need to configure your on-premises VPN gateway. And there, as I already explained, you need to give the passphrase which we created during the creation of the virtual network gateway and the IP address that was automatically assigned to the virtual network gateway. There are certain automation scripts which are already there, which are provided by Azure by default for certain VPN gateways which you can download and you can configure but you can do that manually as well so once all those steps are complete you are good and your both local on-premises network talks to the azure virtual network one thing again i'm reminding you is that the address spaces should not overlap with each other otherwise these connections will not work so i think we are ready with the demo right let's get started we will start our demo by opening the portal.azure.com and there we see that we already have a resource group by the name of ATCSL. So we will go to virtual network to add the virtual network and there we'll click on plus and give it a name ATCSL underscore vnet. Give it an address space which uh, let me choose as 10.101.0.0 slash 16 and let's see yes and we'll choose the resource group as atcsl we'll leave the location as central us but for the subnet we will give it a name of wfe or rather vnet underscore wfe yeah that is fine we'll assign it an ip address space of 10.101.1.0 slash 24 and then we will click on create. So the validation will happen and then the deployment will start. This will take a couple of minutes and once that is done, we'll get the notification that the virtual network we are trying to create has been successfully deployed. So we see here that the, the, the deployment is successful. We can either click on go to resource or click on refresh. We'll go inside the virtual network and click on subnets. 
There, we will notice that the subnet that we created is already present, bnet underscore WFV, but now we are going to create a gateway subnet because that is a must for creating any VPN, either point to site or site to site. The name is by default given and it will pick up the best possible IP address space. And in this case, it has done it with 10.101.0.0, but it is using a 24, but we will, for our demo purposes, we will be using a slash 28. So once that is done, we'll click on create by leaving all other selection as is, and it will hardly take a couple of seconds and then show it, show up here as gateway subnet. Here you go. We already have the gateway subnet created. Once that is done, we will go and search for virtual network gateway and click on it. Once we are on that screen, we will click on add. And here we are again going to start by providing the name. We'll give it a name of ATCSL underscore VNG for virtual network gateway. We will leave the gateway type as VPN because that is what we are creating. The VPN type is route based. We have different SKUs here, VPN GW1, basic, VPN GW2 and 3 and so on and so forth. But we will leave the selection as is to VPN GW1. Once that is done, we'll choose a virtual network. Now, this is the virtual network where we have created the gateway subnet. We cannot have any other uh, virtual network listed here, which does not have a gateway subnet. We will give the name for the IP address as a next step. And this is the IP address, which is required by the on-premises gateway for the configuration. And once that is done, we will click on create. So the configuration of virtual network gateway takes around 40 to 45 minutes to get deployed. But in the meanwhile, we will create a local network gateway. So we will go to the search bar again and type in local network gateway. Click on it. And once we are there on the screen, we'll click on add. Here, we'll again start with providing the name for that resource, which is vnet underscore local GW for gateway. We will give the IP address. Notice here that it needs the public IP address of your local gateway. If we click on command prompt, let me clear the screen for you and do an IP config. So if we see the gateway IP address is 10.0.0.1, but that is the private IP address. We need the public IP address. So we have a very smart website, which is whatsmyv6.com. You can use that to know your public IP address of the gateway. So that's what I've done. Here is my public IP address for the gateway 98.195.254.30. We'll copy that, paste it here. And then we will provide the address space. Now, this address space is something or is for the resources which will try and connect to the Azure virtual network to access the virtual machines within the particular virtual network which we are connected to using the site-to-site -site VPN. My IP address, my local system has an IP address of 10.0.0.235 and I, that is the only machine that I want to connect with the Azure virtual machine. And that is why I have provided this IP address with a CIDR notation of slash 32 representing just one machine. We choose the resource group and we will click on create. So the validation is again happening and the deployment is in progress. This will take a couple of minutes for the local network gateway to be uh, commissioned. So one thing is for all the resources that you create within the uh, Azure portal or anywhere, you need to provide a name. And that is where you start from. You start by providing a name and then start configuring all the other details. Even if for the public IP address or anything, any resource that you're creating, you need to provide a name. And whatever configuration you are providing, it will validate and verify uh, everything and then will start the deployment. As a next step, we need to create connections. So we will go to the search bar, search for connection, and then in the screen, we will click on add. And again, here 
it's a little different. We will start by choosing site to site IPsec because that is what we are going to create. Select the resource group and click on OK. In the next screen, in the next screen, I'm so sorry, you will need to choose the virtual network gateway and the local network gateway that we had created earlier. And we will then have the connection name given. Once that is done, we will provide the passphrase. Now, this is the passphrase, which along with the public IP address that was created during the creation of the virtual network gateway is to be configured on the local VPN gateway so that all the system behind that VPN gateway on the on-premises systems, on the on-premises network can connect to the Azure resources using the site-to-site -site VPN. So this will take a couple of minutes. So we will stop uh, here and we'll come back on the con once the configuration is successful. Oh, it is complete. So we'll click on refresh and we see that the status is currently unknown. But after some time, this will show as uh, succeeded. So if you see now, the status is showing as succeeded. We'll go to the properties and we will see that the provisioning state shows as succeeded, which is good. Now we'll go back to the virtual network gateway and we will see what is the status there. So we'll click on virtual network gateways, nothing to configure just for the verification purposes. We'll go there and we will click on connections and we see that the provisioning state is successful. Next step is to create the virtual machines. Why? Because this is what we are going to connect to from our on-premises machine or on-premises resources. So we will give it a name as WFE01 because that is under the WFE subnet. We'll give it a name and we'll choose an image for this. We are going to choose today Windows Server 2016 Data Center and create a user and password. So this is the username and password which will be used to connect to this particular virtual machine. So we will provide the password and confirm the same and that's perfect. Scroll down and allow the selected ports here along with, so it took a total of three minutes and 46 seconds for the deployment to be completed and we now have a virtual machine. We will go to the resource and we will see that it has a public IP address of 40.86.95.168. But this is the public IP address. We need the private IP address to connect to. So we'll copy the IP address and open the command prompt from our local system, provide the IP address and click on connect. So it will take some time initially to, to connect to that virtual machine, but yeah. So here I have to use the user um, ETCSL admin. Oh, that is already there. We'll click on OK. Oh, I'm so sorry. Forgot to provide the password. So we will provide the password here. And uh, once that is done, we'll click on OK. So I fast forwarded the video, but here I'm connected to my virtual machine. I'll open the command prompt and type in IP config to confirm the IP address that I'm connected to. And yes, I have the IP address as 10.101.1.4. And that is the private IP address of this particular virtual machine. And this concludes our demo. In summary, what did we learn today? We learned how to create a site to site VPN and how the on-premises network can be connected to the Azure virtual network and thereby how the on-premises resources within that particular network can access the resources within the Azure virtual network using the VPN gateway. You can visit azuretraining.com or you can go to SlideShare to download all the training materials and hope this session was informative and helpful to you and you now completely understand how S2S work and what are the applicabilities of S2S? 
Thank you for joining me in this session. Keep assuring.